Greetings, peace and blessings. Happy Saturday. I'm the Moon Mama, and today is the day that Saturn rules. Saturn went retrograde at 2.45 p.m. today, um, which was about 45 minutes ago, and Saturn is at the 25th degree of Aquarius. Saturn is the planet that rules our discipline, our structures, like how we act, the things that we put in place so that we can actually create um, success or anything that we're going to create, right? There is a, there's a structure towards for creation. It's not something that just happens willy-nilly. And Saturn is the governing body of our ability to discipline ourselves, our ability to manage time, and, and this thing of what we call karma, which is cause and effect. Cause and effect is the rule here in this reality. Move it. Sorry. Cause and effect is the rule here in this reality. Nothing happens without cause and effect. So, like Saturn is the gatekeeper in this reality. Whatever you're doing in your life, you cannot escape Saturn. So, Saturn goes retrograde today. And it goes retrograde in Aquarius. And this Saturn is really about us coming into this Saturn's retrograde is about us coming into integrity with who we truly are at the deepest levels. But what that means is that you have to remove the things that are blocking you from being who you are at the deepest level. And so I'm starting the class. It it um, starts tomorrow and the class is is anchored in breaking curses, healing family trauma and removing the things that will keep us away from our freedom. And what I want to say is that this stuff is so subtle. Like, as I have been doing my own work to heal and transform, which I've been doing probably intently, you know, since I was about 19 years old. And what I have discovered in all these years of doing all this work, what I have discovered, I'm sorry, my bra is showing. Uh, what I have discovered is that every thought is a unit of energy and it is creating something. So it's like every thought that you think is a thread. Think of it that way. Every thought that you think is like a thread and it is a thread in the tapestry of your life. So if your thoughts are fear-based or oppositional or anchored in separation, your life will reflect that. And then it's very subtle. So when I talk about breaking karmic curses, like family curses, simple things like, you know, maybe your mother didn't really fulfill her dreams. Maybe she had a desire to do something, but she couldn't because she had a few kids and, you know, she was a single woman. And so then that becomes a curse. Like your mother not being able to fulfill her potential becomes a curse. Be and how it becomes a curse is then what we, the example that we give for our children, they will follow it. They follow the examples. <laughs> they don't follow what we say or what we do. They follow what we show them. So if you show them someone who is not fulfilled and someone whose needs are not really met at the energetic level, this is not about, you know, the act. It shows up in the mundane world, but really it's about the energetic world. It's about at the core, you know, what it looks like. And so say, for instance, you had like, for instance, I had a mother who my mother was her life was always about making men happy, doing things for men and giving her energy to men. And her mother's life was that way, too. And so when I started to started to mature, I realized at some point after many, many years that my attention goes to masculine energy because I'm programmed and conditioned for it to do that way. I can be completely uninterested in someone deep down, but because I'm sort of programmed, it's like, it's like I can't help it because the pattern was set. And so I literally had to watch myself in the act of doing something that 
I really didn't feel incongruent with. It felt out of integrity, but I was still doing it, right? So I had this man come into my life. I was cooking and doing all the stuff that my mother would do, right? Somebody, because that's what my mother was. She's if men around. She's cooking and cleaning. She looked good. She smelled good. And so I was doing this and I realized that I was like, and when I saw myself doing it, I was like, just do it. Don't stop it. Do it so that you can really play it out and see how deep it runs in you so that you can uproot it at the deepest level. So I just continued to do it. And then at one point, maybe a few months in, I've just, I just stopped cooking. I just felt like it. And the person was like, why'd you stop cooking? Why'd you stop cooking? And I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And I sat down and started doing some meditations around the feminine energy and my family. And, you know, we can access anything if we understand. And when I did some meditations around my mother to ask, you know, what is this? Because I could feel that it was rooted in my womb area. And when I went in and asked my mother, what is this? She said, run. This is why I died at 48, because I gave all my power away to men. And when I really needed it, when it came to the point that I really needed more energy, more source, it had been depleted by everyone that I had given it away to. So this is the thing that we have to understand about Saturn and family patterns and karma and trauma. It's the subtlest of stuff. It's so subtle. Like the most important thing for us to always remember is that the world that we are in now is totally built on white supremacy. So there really, and this is, this is an overwhelming thing to say, but there really isn't anything in this reality that we should be trying to really hold on to. Honestly, there is not a thing in this reality that, so which is why I refer to the days of the week as the planetary energies, like literally deconditioning my brain to reconditioning my brain to think differently. You know, we think that the feminine is uh, means woman, but it does not. Feminine and masculine are just functions of energy, right? When you breathe in, that is receptive. That is a feminine faculty. When you exhale, that is a masculine faculty because you bring you bring it to the external. So the more we begin to really learn who we are at our core and how we function, we can begin to transmute those old ways of being, those patterns, those beliefs, those karmic binds and ties that have us rooted into thinking money is our God, thinking love is going to save us, thinking we can elect somebody and they're going to do a job that we want them to do. All these things are anchored in white supremacy and your power being external. That's the core thing in white supremacy is that there is no internal power. There is only external power. And so because there's only external power, we, you, your, your, your choices, the things that you create aren't really anchored in anything lasting because if it doesn't include, ouch, my cat just bit my toe. <laughs> My aunt, why would you do that? Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Yeah, so if we don't if we don't understand how we really function, then we continue to project things away from us, right? So you hear men, you know, men who are really adverse to any sort of feminine energy, right? They, they, they really are at odds with anything that is remotely feminine in their own beingness, because that is what this reality has taught us. It has taught us to do these binary things. Feminine is bad masculine is bad, you know, so we don't recognize that we are both and right. And so when we don't recognize it, it shows that, let me tell you, it's so interesting, right? So somebody who might be at odds with the feminine energy and, and really at odds with their own feminine energy could have lung problems because the lungs are a function of the feminine. They take in air. They could have asthma because they're not able to really absorb and take in because they're at odds with feminine energy, which means that they are not receptive at the core of themselves. 
and then that will give them so this is this stuff functions in your health like it's it's everything you cannot oh, i'm sorry you cannot you it impacts every area of your life every single area of your life will become impacted when you when you're not aware of how this really works so saturn saturn is about our cause and effect our karma how we use time right and time is not the watch that's not the time that's that's fake time that's western white male <laughs> patriarchal european time that's some bullshit right that they gave us so that we could go to work so that we can make money so that we can give our energy to them the real time is what we really see the sun do right and and if we understand you know that if we begin to create time in a new way that is not this 24 hours in a day and monday you gotta work make money and blah 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 you're running late and all that kind of shit if you create a new relationship with time it will extend your consciousness it will it will give you more space more energy because it's not as ruthless as it's not as ruthless as the system that we're in. Nature is filled with grace and love and, you know, expandedness. And so it's just a very different experience. So today at the 25th degree, Saturn is, the 25th degree is the degree of desire. And yes, absolutely. The degree of desire. So if you if you're interested, my this um, Saturn and retrograde class is all based in ancestral practices. We're going to be doing the ancestral practices to free ourselves from the mindsets and the ways of being that we have been conditioned into. You know, we've been born into this stuff. Somebody at two years old told you, you need to think this and you need, this is bad or this is good. That stuff is deeply indoctrinated in us. So the class that I'm teaching is offering the rituals and the practices to really help us transmute our power and undo those deep, subtle conditionings and agreements that we have been practicing for many, many, many years that we don't even realize we're practicing. You, there's stuff you believe that you don't even realize you believe. There's stuff that you think that you don't even realize um, that you don't even realize. Right. Like the fact that we believe that we have to go to work to make money. The fact, you know, it's all of these things are just belief systems that we've been conditioned into in a deep way. Um, so the 25th degree is the degree of desire, desire and desire is the power within us that generates a reality right a reality is a belief come into full manifestation that's what a reality is right so whatever you believe your desires have to be aligned to your belief systems and desire is a function like faith like seeing like eating desire is a function like walking and st desire is not we all have desire desire whether we're conscious of it or not but whatever you have in your life right now came through your power of desire whether it was turned positive or negative it's all based in some in, rooted in some level of desire and when we're not conscious of it and it's unconscious then it becomes it's it it'll show up in negative ways to get our attention so that we can realign it the thing that is probably the most profound thing for me that i'm really understanding is that we really are batteries we are batteries we are co-creators with the universe and we are energy systems and we are running electricity through us that then magnetizes to us our desire and most of us are unconscious of our desires and we don't know because here's why because we were born at a time when we were you know we went to daycare at three years old and we went to we went to school at five and we weren't taught how to really be human. We weren't taught what this body really does, how it really functions. We were just given these rules like, you know, um, don't have sex and because it's bad. Or, you know, if girls bleed, they're dirty. You know, those kinds of things. We weren't really told the truth. We were told mythologies based upon 
systems that are not aligned to truth. So we don't know how we work, really. And our thoughts, like I said, our thoughts are threads weaving a tapestry that is our life. From the deepest level, like there is your subconscious, your subconscious remembers everything you have ever been through, ever in this lifetime and others. But the faculty that would have you remember is turned off. And so you would have to do work to turn it back on, which is possible, which is totally possible. You can do the work to turn your body on so that it heals itself. You can do the work to turn your telepathy on, to turn your clairvoyance on. You can do all of that. And you must. Otherwise, the reality that we've been born into, that we have been functioning in, that reality is dying. It is collapsing like a, like a storm is moving through it, right? And so because a storm is moving through that reality, we must learn how to function in our true authentic ways of being. We must. We must learn how to be who we really are so that we can survive and thrive here. We must, we must. If we do not, we will continue to be subject and the depression and the health challenges and all that sort of stuff will run amok in your life and you will be at the effect of things that are not really true for you or good for you. So, um, the moon today is in Leo and the moon in Leo is our ability to... Um, our hearts. It's opening our hearts. And as the sun is in Gemini um, and Mercury just went out of retrograde in Gemini, turned direct, it's still in its retrograde. So what we're really doing is looking at the stories that we have been telling ourselves about life. The stories create the perception. So what you want to do is begin to tell yourself a new story. You must tell yourself a new story. And the new story will lead you to new frequencies that open up new possibilities, right? So, um, let me see if there's, if I can give an example of a new story I have told myself. Oh, you know, uh, so I, I started a while ago just telling myself that abundance was all around me. Abundance is all around me. It's all around me. The leaves that are in front on the trees, they're abundant. You know, everything is abundant. And so as I live into that, I started living into it because I had such a profound experience with scarcity and lack. Um, and I would always sort of panic. But as I started really le leaning into abundance is all there is. And when scenarios would arise that would typically bring up scarcity for me, I would sit inside of them. I would sit with them and, and ask myself, what is this for? Why are you sitting in this? What, why did you create this? And as I would sit in the experience that was really undesirable, right? Really something that was freaking me out or making, you know, bringing up a karmic curse from my family, right? Around scarcity and not having enough. And as I would sit with it, sit with the thing that I actually do not desire to occur, that does not feel good. As I sit with it, it transmutes in to something else. Because the thing that is most important for us to understand is that we are here to have experience. The divine created you. You are a geographical location in the mind of God, and you are here to have experiences. The challenge is that we live in this very dualistic time that has us feeling like something is separate from God, right? So we don't want to experience things that we think are not good. But God is not a fucking human being. And God does not hold good and bad the way that we do. This human experience, that's what I'm saying. This Western European white imperialistic world, capitalistic world that we live in has forced us to think in these very... Um, minuscule ways that have us so limited in our scope of understanding of who we really are. 
So, you know, we think that things are bad. You know, we think that death is bad. Death is not a bad thing. Death is just the opening to the next reality. Death is a death is a birth, right? And sometimes the death is physical and somebody's body physically dies, but sometimes the death is just emotional and your the way you used to think dies and it feels like you need to fucking die cuz it hurts, right? And and we think no, stop. We think that's bad, but it's not bad. It's just an aspect of the divine. You know, there is that Bible verse that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thine are with me. You know, how? when was the last time you gave yourself the opportunity to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil? That is an experience. That is a part of our human our humanness. And when we understand, when we can walk through the valley of shadow of death, you actually get to realize that you are invincible, that nothing can touch you, except that you have agreed to allow something in. So this is, this is the work. You cannot be at odds with things. I know I have, there've been times in my life I've been coaching women who are going through challenging things, things that they feel are challenging or undesirable in their relationships. And I will say to them, don't leave, <laughs> don't leave, don't leave while this is happening. Literally, this, you need this. Sometimes we need the poison because the poison will make us resilient. It will make us stronger. Sometimes we need to be bitten by the very thing that we don't want so that we can realize that thing is not greater than us. And this is Saturn. This is what Saturn does. It makes you grow your strength. It makes you grow your power. It disciplines you. It forces you out of your immaturity. It forces you out of your bullshit. One of the things about my mother that was really funny is that she was never like jealous of other women. And there were so many women around. There were so many women around. And I used to, I just would be like, what is it that she... And there's something profound about a woman who is so anchored in her sense of self and her sense of worth and her connection to her partner that she doesn't, that it doesn't matter who else he's connected to because she knows that what she brings is invaluable. So he can go do whatever he want to do because he ain't going to get this nowhere else. That's how my mother was. And it used to just, I used to be like, how the fuck does she do that? <laughs> she was never jealous. She just was, uh, she was too good for it. She was, she was too fine to be worried about another fucking woman. And, you know, if she was going to take her, she didn't care. But that was Saturn. Saturn had, had dragged her through the coals enough to let her see you nobody can replace you <laughs> you are irreplaceable so be yourself and watch as people come and go because they they know that what you have to offer they can't get it anywhere else so all right you all I look forward to all of you joining the Saturn's Retrograde class. It is, it starts, and you can join in my link tree. It's $333. If you want to break up the payments and make three payments of $111, you can do that. You just have to ask me for the link, um, and I will give that to you. And I'm just very excited. So peace and blessings, everyone. I love you guys very much. Have a really beautiful day. Bye-bye.